We're going to do a drawing of a couple of mannequins. Welcome to the art project. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. If you enjoy this video or use it, please give me a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, please uh, leave them in the, in the uh, comments down below. Um, this is the drawing that I did glued to black paper. These are the objectives uh, for this project. This is the photograph that I am drawing from. and You can see that it has a grid on it. And this is the large grid and the parameters of the grid. And I'm going to show you how to do them here. We're going to make a grid on a 18 by 24 uh, sheet of paper that we will use in the mannequin project. Now you might be watching this video for another project or do something else, but this is the basic layout for this basic grid that we're going to make for this project. Um, I'm going to use a Sharpie so as to be sure that you can see uh, the marks that I'm making in the, uh, in the video, <clears throat> but you want to use a pencil and you want to draw lightly so you can erase if you need to. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ruler somewhere close to this end. doesn't have to be right on the end doesn't have to be, um, you know, close to the end, it just needs to be not on this end, but this end. Um, I'm going to put the zero on the edge of the paper. And then I'm going to put a mark on the one. And we go down to this end, you'll see that the paper is 18 inches wide. I'm going to put a mark on the 17. I'm going to move my yardstick down here to this end of the paper. And I'm going to put a mark on the one and the 17. Now that gives me two sets of marks that I'm going to connect to make a border up here and a border down here. So both this mark right here is one inch from the top and this mark is one inch from the top. So if I put my yardstick on those two marks you'll see that the entire edge of the yardstick is one inch from the top. It's also important that you hold your ruler in such a way, see how I'm holding it here, this is not the best way to hold it, but in this particular position it's good. Um, I want to spread my fingers out as far as I can, maybe like this if possible, so that I can hold it um, steady. If I just hold it over here, it's not going to be steady. If I hold it over here, it's not going to be steady. And I'm dealing with gravity, so it's even more important. Uh, but for you on the, uh, if you're working at a table, um, it's important for you too because uh, the marker could push it. So again, I have a mark that's one inch from the bottom and one inch from the bottom. So if I put my ruler on those two marks, then the entire length of my ruler, this edge, is one inch from the side. So I'm going to spread my fingers as far as possible. So I'm holding as much of the ruler as possible. I've got it on that mark and this mark. And I'm going to draw a line that goes from this end to this end. All right, now I'm going to put my ruler this way and I'm going to put the zero on the edge of the paper and I'm going to put a mark on the one and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put a mark on the 17 and the 18. And I'm going to come down here, not all the way to the bottom, but close to the bottom, put my zero on the edge of the paper, put a mark on the one and the 17 and the 18. Now I've got three sets of marks. Each set has two marks in it and each of those two correspond with the number on this ruler, 1, 17, and 18. The 1, I'm going to put my ruler on it. Remember both of these marks are one inch from the side of the paper. So if I put my yardstick on those two marks, the entire length of this edge of the yardstick is one inch away from the side of the paper and I'm going to draw a line that connects the two borders. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the 18 just for clarification. You can do the 17 first if you want to, but I'm going to do the 18. These two marks are exactly 18 inches from this side of the paper, which is going to give me a square. This is 18 inches this way, so if I make it 18 inches that way, it gives me a square. So I'm going to put a mark, I mean a line that goes all the way down from one end of the paper to the other end of the paper. And that, that gives me a square 
uh, of paper. I'm going to cut this off later on. Now I'm going to put my yardstick on these two marks. These are both one inch from the edge of the, the new edge of the paper. I'm going to hold my ruler in such a way that it won't move. And I'm going to draw a line that goes from this border to this border. This gives me an 18 by 18 piece of paper with a one inch border all the way around that square. On the inside, I'm gonna do a four inch grid. To do that, I'm gonna put my ruler right here, somewhere close to the top, with the zero on the first border, and then I'm gonna put a mark on the four, the eight, and the 12. The four, the eight, and the 12 are all multiples of four, which 16 is divisible by, and if you measure from here, from this border here to this border here, it's 16 inches. I'm going to come down to the bottom of the paper, close to the bottom, put the end of my ruler, the end of my yardstick on the border, and then I'm going to put a mark on the 4, the 8, and the 12. Again, uh, multiples of 4 that 16 is divisible by. I'm going to connect the four, the, four, the two marks that are on four, the two marks that were at eight, and the two marks that were at twelve. Perfect. Now I'm going to put my ruler this way, again on the top border right there. The zero is on the top border. It doesn't matter where my yardstick is, but I'm going to just put it in this last part. Put a mark on the 4, the 8, and the 12. Slide my ruler over here to this end somewhere. Put my 0 on the top border. Put a mark on the 4, the 8, and the 12. I'm going to put my ruler this way. Connect the two fours. These two marks were the four inch marks, four inches away from the border. Slide it down a little bit, put my ruler on the eight inch marks. Slide my ruler down again and put it on the eight inch marks. And now I have a grid for my a mannequin project. By the way, you have to have two marks. You'll notice every time I made a line, I measured and put two marks. So I measured one inch from the top and one inch from the top. I've got two marks. I can connect those two marks and I know that I'm right. From here to here, I put two marks, one on the 18 here and one on the 18 here. And when I connected those, I knew that I was right. If you only make one mark, say I put a mark right there, then where I put my ruler could be you know, anywhere on the other end. I need two marks to line it up properly. Probably one of the most important things about doing this. Now for the second part of this, I'm going to transfer square by square the image from the <coughs> photograph to the large drawing paper. So. In the video, it's kind of hard to see the grid, but basically, like I said, I'm taking it one square at a time, working across the top. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you follow it square by square and you transfer from the small square to the big square, when you're done, you'll end up with an enlarged drawing. The second reason it's important is because each square helps you to get the proportions right. Um, I often ask my students, you know, about doing this and, and drawing the um, mannequins or tell them that we're about to start doing it and they will emphatically say oh I can't draw those mannequins or I can't draw uh, figures and uh, when I point out that they're going to be doing two of them two mannequins they usually say why do we have to do two uh, I can't draw two mannequins you know as if they could only draw one well um, the way this works you don't have to draw mannequins at all you just have to draw what's in each square so I went through and I draw from one square to the other square and um, do the best that I can to 
line them up. If it's not perfect, that's okay. Nobody's going to be able to look at your drawing and compare it with the photograph when, it, when you're done anyway. So you want to get it as close as you can, but it does not have to be perfection. So there we have it, uh, all of my drawing uh, completed. I made some mistakes, but I, I fixed them. I didn't erase much because I, I, I can remember what is fixed and what's not. And um, now I'm gonna start to shade it in. Now, unfortunately, I did not get all of the video footage of me shading it in, but it's kind of long and boring anyway. I just looked at the photograph and shaded and looked at the um, uh, photograph again and shaded some more. Oh yeah, and um, it's best to erase the grid before you start shading. That way you don't have to erase all of your shading after you've done a good job on shading everything. So please erase your grid first and then shade everything in. That's pretty much it. When I was done, I glued it, I cut it out and glued it to a piece of black paper and then glued the black paper to a piece of white paper. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Leave some comments down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Good luck.